once upon a time, but perhaps not that long ago. The moon. Moon wasn't feeling very well. But who was Moon to ask for help? It looked at the planets and the stars, but they were too busy being dippers and twins and things like that and weren't really bothered with Moon. So poor old Moon was on its own, pondering on who its friends were. It hadn't felt very well since the Americans had got to it with their buggies and astronauts and flags and then the Russians and then the Chinese. Ah, what am I to do, said Moon, and it thought about what friends it might have. And it looked towards Earth and it thought, Bat? L? No, they're no good, they're a bit skittery. Don't think they're very sensible. And then it thought about Badger, good old dependable Badger. Badger loved the moon because it helped find berries and worms and roots. Yeah, Badger. Badger would be a sensible person to ask for help. So it leant forward a bit and it shouted out to try and get heard by Badger. But nothing really happened except for an earthquake in China. And Moon thought, well, I suppose at the end of the day I'm up here in the sky and Badger's down there on Earth. That means only one thing, I need to go down there on Earth. How am I going to get down there? And as it was thinking this, something happened to Moon that had ever happened before. Moon fainted and started to fall out of the sky. It came to a bit, and as it came to, it stuck out its arms and its hands to try and slow itself down and stop itself from falling, but it didn't work. The fingers scratched the sky. It left those marks, you know, like you get when an aeroplane goes past. And carried on falling. And hit the ground with an enormous crump. Just missing Ely Cathedral. Well... When Moon came to, oh, it had a headache. And it was a bit dishevelled and dirty and not looking very Moon-like, to be honest. And as Moon looked around, it couldn't see much, but then there was a shape moving towards it, it could see. And as it looked, it saw two glossy black eyes and a white stripe. And it thought... Hang on, Badger, is that you? And Badger stopped in his tracks. Uh, yes, it's me, it's Badger. Who, who are you? A moon! You know, the one who shines on you at night. Badger looked. You don't look like moon. You're not big enough, you can't be big enough, surely. And what are you doing down here? You should be up there. Hmm, are you sure you're the moon? Yeah, I'm sure I'm the moon. And they had a bit of a discussion about was it the moon or wasn't it the moon? And Moon said, smell me if you don't believe me. And Badger smelt the moon and he said, well, you smell an awful lot like old human socks. And Moon disgustedly said, old human socks, I smell of finest cheese. What are socks anyway? And they went on and on, and eventually Badger said, OK, OK, if you are the moon, what's the matter with you? I don't really know, said Moon. I'm just not feeling at all well. And, of course, the other problem is I should be up there, so I, I, I really need you to help me, Badger. I really need you to help me. And with that, Moon fainted again. And it was days this time before Moon came round. Must have been really unwell. And when Moon came round, it was surrounded by these brown twisty things. I was thinking, what on earth are these? When it saw a nose pope over the top. Badger, is that you? Yeah, it's me again, said Badger. Moon asked, what, what are these? What are these? They're roots, 
They're special roots, they'll make you feel better. You eat them, the food. Moon looked. Food? The only food it usually needed was sunlight on its face. Well, what, what, what? Moon wasn't sure about this food concept. What do I do with this food? You eat it. Eat. How, how do I eat it? You, you put the roots into that mouth thing, you know, that the thing you keep talking out of. All right, said the moon. All right. And it was a bit unsure, but then it thought, you know what, he's collected all of these for me. I really should eat them or try. I've never known friendship like this in the heavens. So I'll try. So Moon started to eat roots. Moon wasn't impressed at all with the taste. They were absolutely horrible. But Moon persisted. And after a few hours of root chomping, Moon started to feel better. I actually think I might stand up, said Moon. Are you sure? Yeah, I think I might stand up. And sure enough, Moon braced his feet and he pushed himself up. Oh, don't feel too bad at all, he said. Don't feel too bad at all. Well, said Badger, you are looking a lot better. And hearing that, Moon said, OK, then, if I'm looking and feeling a lot better, then you must have a plan ready for me to get back up there, surely. Badger looked at Moon. Um, well, I've got an idea. Have you? What's the idea, then? Well, I'll tell you now. It involves swans. What are swans? said the moon. And so Badger had to explain what swans were. And after that, Badger said, the other part of the plan involves walking an awful long way. Walking an awful long way. What does that mean? Well, one foot in front of another for days and days and days. Oh, said Moon. I think you need to do some more eating, said Badger. We need to build your strength up and then we'll set off later on today. And that's what they did. Moon ate and then later on they set off. They walked over fields, over meadows and through hedgerows and through woods and through ditches and streams and rivers. They were half soaked, they were half frozen and they'd walked all over Will's mothers just guided by that weak light that Moon was managing to put out. After a few days Moon well, Moon was so tired, he said, I can't go another step. We must be there. Are we nearly there yet? Oh, said Badger. I knew this had happened. We're not far off, he said. We're not far off at all. We'll soon be... Well, do you remember where I said we were going? You said something about the hundred-foot river and the ooze washes, said the Moon. That's right, and we're nearly there. They carried on. And a little while later, on the horizon, they saw this straight, dark line. What's that, said Moon? And Badger had his fingers behind his back, his fingers crossed. I think it's where we're going. And as they got closer and closer, he felt happier and happier because he knew that that was the bank of the Hundred Foot River beside the Ooze Washes. And when they got to the bottom of the bank, they climbed up it. And there they stood. And Badger just looked. He'd seen this a few times before, but Moon had never seen this before. Well, not from on Earth, anyway. And he was amazed at the amount of water there was in front of them. Couldn't believe it. What are we going to do now, then? We wait for the swans. What do you mean we wait for the swans? Aren't they here all the time? Well, there's some, but not that many. So as they stood there, they watched birds of all different shapes and sizes. There was tall ones and short ones and curly-beaked ones and long-necked ones as well. Some that was pretty colours of pink and gold. And then there were some others that were black and white. And then there were some birds there. They were red, they were. Oh, as their heads were, anyway. And they looked. But Moon kept saying, where are the swans? 
And eventually Moon said, you have made these up, haven't you? You've got me here on false pretenses. Badger said, no. And then he looked up because he'd heard a noise and over their heads came hundreds of swans that came down onto the ewes' washes. And Badger looked at Moon and said, I didn't make them up. Well, next thing was to get in touch with the swan. So Badger left Moon laying on the bank and off he toddled down the bank. And he was going through clumps of reeds and rushes and across bits of water trying to find a swan. But he must have been tired of something because he ended up finding a clump of rushes to go to sleep in. When he woke up, well, just outside the clump, there was a swan asleep floating on the water. And he looked at it, and it was floating with its neck curled round on top of its body. And the morning light was playing on it, and it looked beautiful. It opened its eyes. And Badger introduced himself and started to tell it all about Moon how it was ill and how Moon needed to be got back up in the sky. And when he'd finished describing everything, he said to that old swan, is there any chance, do you think, that the swans could help me get Moon back up in the sky? That swan looked at him. It looked down its long beaky nose and it said, I really don't think so, and swam off. Badger was devastated. It got, it, it, well, he hadn't expected it to be easy, but this was hard. What was he going to tell Moon? He was devastated, broken-eyed. What am I going to tell him? Poor old Moon. He went back to Moon. And when he got there, he was thinking, what do I say? <sighs> he put it off for a bit longer by finding a few worms. And he sat down and he chewed them all up and savoured the taste and ate them. And it gave him a chance to think a bit. And eventually he winked at Moon and said, oh, I think I've got it sussed. We're going to have to use a bit of cunning with these swans. Have to use a bit of cunning. Going to leave you here, he said. And have a think. And that's what he did. And he came back and he went up to Moon and he said, just stand up. Now, just this bit along here, that's perfect. You just stand there. Because he'd noticed there was a load of swans below on the water. And he gave Moon a little nudge. And Moon toppled into the swans. Well, most of the swans, they just hissed at each other and pushed each other about. But one or two of them turned their heads to where this great lump had come from. And they said, uh, Badger, is that you up there causing trouble again? Ah, oh, hello, swans, he said. i tell you something. Have you noticed there, uh, without the moonlight on you, you lot don't look very pretty at all, do you? You look positively drab. And they looked at each other. He had a point. He definitely had a point. You need to be helping my friend Moon. What do you mean, helping your friend Moon? Well, he's not well, and he's down here as well. We need to get him back up there. Which is why I need you lot. And they looked at him. And Badger looked at Moon. He said, yeah, getting you home, Moon. What do you think? So Moon, Moon from somewhere, summoned up the strength to shine for a bit. And the moonlight hit the swan's feathers and they just shone. And they looked beautiful. And seeing that, Moon shone a bit more, strained every muscle to shine a bit more. But it soon faded and moon was there again dark the swans get the light back on come on we love this get that light back on they huddled round moon and badger come on come on they were squabbling like farmyard geese so once again badger explained the whole plan and then they left and they left the swans to talk and moon and badger listened they could hear the swans should we or shouldn't we help Moon? Could we or couldn't we help Moon? Do we like Badger's plan or don't we like Badger's plan or whatever? 
and Moon and Badger dozed off listening to this, and when they woke up, well, there were loads of swans in front of them and loads more coming in. Thousands and thousands of swans. There was uncles and aunts, mums and dads, brothers and sisters. You, you, well, you just couldn't see the swans. OK, said Badger, you're going to help then. We are, said the swans. So what do we do? So the next thing Badger did was went and got his friends, the spiders, and the spiders came along. And what Badger had them do was spin a silken thread around the moon to make like a silken cradle, a support moon. Then, the end of that thread, each spider fixed to an individual swan's beak. So they were all joined to that silken cradle. Then, before even Moon had had a chance to say to Badger, Cheerio, mate, I'll see you soon, I'll shine a light on you, the swans all took off as if someone had gone three, two, one, fly. And they flew up and took the tender slack out of those silken threads and they kept flapping. And slowly, ever so slowly, that silken cradle took off from the ground. Moon couldn't stop glowing. It was fantastic. And as he went higher and higher, he could see the flooded washes. He could see fields and hedgerows and woods and villages and Ely and Cambridge and London and seas and continents and oceans and then the curvature of the earth. And still the swans kept flying. They had to stop a couple of times because the air was getting a bit thinner and they needed to catch a breath. But they kept going because they knew that if they didn't get moon back up there, they'd never have moonlight on them at night and look absolutely marvellous. And they kept flapping until they felt moon move all by himself and that cry cradle get so much lighter because it wasn't supporting him anymore. And then they stopped and they dropped that silken cradle, which fell to earth as a million tiny rainbows. Moon, Moon floated back up into the sky to the place he'd been since the start of time. And he looked at the planets and the stars and was hoping for a welcome back, but he didn't get one. But he wasn't worried too much because Moon and Badger were now very good friends and he would always shine on Moon Badger to help him find berries and worms and roots and he'd also shine on those swans and the fens because they'd carried him back up there and he could see by well, the way they were moving around the fields they were happy, all those little white dots and down on earth, Badger was busy snuffling around in the moonlight looking for berries and worms and roots and he'd gone back to the edge of that hole that hole that the moon had made when he crashed into the earth nearly hitting Ely Cathedral well it's the lake now and Badger looked at it and he looked up at his friend the moon and he was happy that things were as they should be the moon was where it should be now and for the rest of time.